Hello and welcome to this video tutorial from BlenderCookie.com. My name is Bartek Skorupa and in this video we will be controlling the influence of our materials on other objects in our scene. And for that we will be using the Light Path node. When we are in the node editor and we are creating our cycles materials, Shift A, Input, Light Path. The node that at first looks very mysterious, but when we begin to understand how render engines work, everything will become a little bit clearer. Okay, so here we have our very simple scene. We have just two objects, this ball in the middle and this little box. Here's our camera and I have illuminated my scene using just one lamp and this is the sun lamp and those objects have extremely simple materials. Our ball is the basic diffuse material and it has a red color and this box is a white diffuse material. Our lamp is pure white but anyway, on those white walls we have a little bit of reddish color and this is the result of the bounced light. So we see that this material, this object, influences other objects in our scene. And this phenomenon is called global illumination. So our objects get the light not only from the direct light sources, but also react between one another. The objects influence the other objects and we will be controlling this influence. So, for example, here in this scene, it is possible to control the light that bounces off this red ball and we can do it without changing the looks of this ball. I will now create such setup without further analysis why I am doing certain things. Then I will introduce some other factors, some other materials, show you what is possible and then I'll explain the concept behind it so it will be easier to understand what is going on. Okay, so say we want to control the influence of this ball when it reacts with other diffuse materials. I will add the input light path node and I will be using the outputs of this node as factors for mixing several things. So I would like this material to look exactly like this, but I would like to lower its influence on other diffuse surfaces. So I should make this color a little bit darker. But this way I am changing not only the influence of this material on other surfaces, but also the looks of this material. As you can see, it is simply much darker. So let's say that I like the influence of this material on other diffuse materials, but I would like to leave its color when I look at it much brighter. So let's restore this color here and let's mix it with other color with a darker one that will give us the desired influence on other diffuse materials. So we can simply add the color mix node and I will set the upper socket to this color, control C, control V. Let's paste this color also here into the lower socket, but I will make the lower one a little bit darker. Now I will plug this one here, set the factor to zero. This way this material uses only this brighter color. When I set the factor to one, it uses the darker color. But let's feed the factor input with is diffuse ray output of the light path node. And we can of course set this color to whatever we like. Let's say that we want it to be green, bright green. So the ball in general is red, but when it's seen by the diffuse materials, by other diffuse materials, it is considered to be green. We are controlling the material of this red ball, but in fact we are controlling how other objects look like when they calculate the influence of this object. Okay, so let me now show you what is possible when we use the outputs of light path node as factors for mixing certain things. I have added two additional materials to this box. Here in this area I have a glossy material, Beckman distribution, and the roughness value is set to something else than zero. This part uses the other material, also glossy one, but with a sharp distribution. So here we have a little bit blurry reflections and here sharp reflections. Okay, so now let's take a look at the material of this ball. The setup for this material that I created here allows me to do this. I can set it such that when, for example, it is reflected by this kind of material, it is seen as if it were yellow. So it is red, but when it's reflected in this part, it's yellow, as you can see. Let's now change its behavior when it's reflected by the sharp mirror. 
I can also set the color of the shadows that this object is casting. Let's do it. Now I will make it green when it reacts with other diffuse materials. Okay, now let's go a little bit more crazy. Here we have additional object and it's a glass and we can do something like this. So in general, this material is red, but when it's seen by the diffuse materials, it is considered to be green. When it's seen by sharp mirrors, it is considered to have this color. Blurry reflections have the yellow color. We have set the color of the shadows that this object casts to this color. And when it's seen by the transparent materials, transparent objects, this is called the transmission ray, it is considered to be blue. And this is achieved using the proper mixture of several outputs of light path node. And then those mixtures are used as the factors for mixing shaders or mixing colors. Okay, so let's now analyze the outputs of the light path node. As you can see, this setup is a little bit crazy. That's why I called this material crazy material. But let's not worry about it at the moment. Let's focus on the light path node alone. But at first, let's maybe change this material to something simpler. Just the red diffuse shader. Okay, light path node. First output is called is camera ray. So it means what happens when we look at the object, when we see the object through the camera. How do we see the object? Now, when the material is set to the diffuse one with this red color, everything sees it this way. The diffuse materials see it this way, transparent ones, glossy ones, and the camera sees it this way also. But we can make the camera, we can make us see this material differently. So let's duplicate this diffuse material, change its color to green, for example. Now I will mix those two materials. So I will add the shader, mix shader, plug it here. I will plug this green material into the lower socket of it, set the factor to zero. So now it's red. When I set the factor to one, it's green. But when I plug is camera ray output of the light path node to the factor, this material is seen as the red diffuse material for everything in our scene except the camera. The camera, our eyes, see it as the green one. Okay, the next one is called is shadow ray. Here I have zoomed into this node such that we clearly see the outputs of it. Is shadow ray. So we can translate it to what happens if the object casts shadow. Let's plug the is shadow ray to the factor of this mixed shader. And as you can see, nothing happens. Why? Because both of those shaders are the diffuse shaders. And the diffuse materials cast the shadows exactly the same no matter what colors they are. Diffuse material is fully opaque, so it simply blocks the light. And in order to see the influence of this is shadow ray input here, we have to change the second input to something else, to let's say transparent shader. I will do it here. Transparent BSDF. The color of it is set to green, and this caused the shadow to be green. Let's plug it directly here to the material output. So this is how our scene would look like if this material is seen this way as the transparent one for all kinds of the rays in our scene. And here we can see the mixture. Now, is diffuse ray. This is rather logical. Let's change this material back to the diffuse one and plug is diffuse ray here. Now, when this ball is seen by the diffuse materials, it is considered to be green. The next one is is glossy ray, so let's plug it here. And we see that it's a little bit tricky. Logically, we would expect this change to happen only here and here. But as you can see, it is seen as the green color also when we look through this magnifying glass. And the reason for that is the material of this glass. This is a standard glass shader. And glass, by its nature, is the mixture of transmission, transparency, but also the mirror reflections. So the glass shader has the glossy component in it. That's why when we plug the is glossy ray output of the light path node here, the material of this ball is considered to be green also in this area. But here in the light path node, we also have the output that is called is transmission ray. 
Let's see what happens if we subtract the transmission rate from the glossy rate. So I will add converter math node here. Let's change the operation to subtract. Take is glossy ray and subtract transmission ray from it. Let's collapse it, move it here and plug the result here as the factor. And this is what happens. Okay, so is transmission ray controls how the material behaves when it's reacting with transmitting materials, transparent materials. Okay, there are three more outputs of this light path node. Is singular ray, is reflection ray, and the ray length. And it's not that easy to understand what they do before we get the basic idea of how the render engines work, how the ray tracing works, how the path tracing works. So let's get down to it. The things that I will be explaining right now are rather complicated, so I will use several simplifications. Okay, so let's imagine a very simple world. We have just a single object, this one, only one light source, this is the point light. Here we have our camera, and this brighter area is the field of view from the camera. In real world, this lamp would emit several rays of light, it would emit unlimited amount of those rays, but we are in computer graphics, so we will limit this. Let's say that it emits 128 rays, in all of the directions. As you can see, most of those rays went nowhere. They didn't hit anything. But some of them did hit this object that we have present in our scene. We have emitted 128 rays. And as you can see, only 8 of them may contribute to what we see in the camera. So computing all of those other light rays would be just a waste of energy. When we take a look at the field of the view of the camera, we see that only six of those rays did hit the part of the object that is seen by the camera. Those two are also useless. That's why in ray tracing we shoot the rays backwards, we shoot the rays from the camera. So let's now imagine that instead of shooting 128 rays from the light source, we shoot only 16 rays from the camera. This is what happens. So we shoot the rays from the camera and some of them will eventually hit some objects. In our example, 14 of the 16 shot rays did hit the surface of this object. Two of them, those leftmost two, don't hit anything, so they will simply return the color of the background. Now, what happens with those rays? We can easily imagine that every single pixel in our image will be represented by one camera ray. This is not 100% true because we shoot more than one ray per pixel and those additional rays are used to calculate the anti-aliasing and it's simply been tested that one ray per, per pixel is not enough. Okay, so the rays have been shot. What happens next? Let's analyze just a single ray. It did hit this surface, so now we know which point should be displayed in this particular pixel. In order to see anything at this point, some light needs to be reflected off the surface. And then this reflected light will go this direction straight to the camera. When we have the diffuse material and it's been hit by some light ray, it will reflect this light in all of the directions. One of them will be this one. Those ones will not contribute to what we are seeing, so let's erase them. This is what would happen in the real world. But we are tracing our rays backwards. So we are shooting a bunch of diffuse rays in all of the directions and it is possible that some of them will hit some lamp. And in our example, none of those rays hit anything, but this one did reach the lamp. So Ray Tracer analyzes the features of this diffuse material, the energy of this lamp, the distance between the lamp and this point, the angle, normals values, and basing on all of those data, it will simply calculate what color this particular pixel should have. If we had another lamp in our scene, let's say that we have some lamp here, one of the diffuse rays shot from this point would hit this lamp. So both of those lamps will contribute to the color of this particular pixel. In this case, we are analyzing only the direct light. If the diffuse ray hits any lamp, 
additional ray is being shot from this point and this is the shadow ray shadow ray is shot straight from the point towards the light simply to see if this diffuse ray isn't blocked by some object let's say that we have additional object in our scene when we shoot the shadow ray that is following exactly this diffuse ray we see that this ray shot from here towards the light intersects with the object the opaque object before it hits the light which means that the light from this lamp will be blocked by this object and this is how the shadows are being calculated but our diffuse shaders our diffuse materials are not illuminated only by the lamps but also by some light that is bounced off other surfaces so some of the diffuse rays will hit this object for example it is not seen by the camera but it may contribute to the looks of this object those diffuse rays hit this object so in order to see how this object contributes to the color of this pixel we have to analyze all of those points so if this is the diffuse material as well we again have to shoot several diffuse rays from every single of those points and this ray will hit this lamp this way we know what color this point has one of the rays shot from this point will also hit the lamp here as well here and here and all of those points will contribute to the color of this pixel okay let's now imagine that this is not the diffuse material but the glossy one if it's just a mirror we shoot the ray from the camera so this is the camera ray it hits this surface and the glossy reflection ray is being shot this way the incoming angle will be equal to the outgoing angle if this ray doesn't hit anything it will return the color of the background so if this is a perfect mirror this particular pixel will return the color of the background but let's say that it hits some object so in such case we have to analyze what color this point of the object will have if this is a diffuse material we will shoot diffuse rays in all of the directions one of those diffuse rays will hit the lamp so it will be followed by the shadow ray the shadow ray didn't hit anything before it reached the lamp which means that this lamp will fully contribute to the color of this point so we have calculated the color of this point this value will be sent here and this way it will return the color of this pixel when we have the frosted glossy surface not only one ray needs to be analyzed but several glossy rays are being shot and they form a kind of a cone because we have to analyze not only one point but several points and this way we will have the effect of the blurry reflections each of those points will generate the diffuse rays in all of the directions some of those rays will hit the lamp those diffuse rays will be followed by the shadow rays and all of those informations will go back here to determine the color of this particular pixel now let's imagine that this material is a transparent one it's a glass for example so it has some index of refraction if such material is hit by the camera ray it sends the transmission ray this ray will have a different direction than the camera ray because of index of refraction so let's say that it goes like this then it hits the back face of this material and it will shoot another transmission ray banded like this if this ray doesn't hit any surface it will return the color of the background but in this case this transmission ray did hit some object so this point of this object needs to be analyzed and depending on the kind of this material the proper kinds of reflection ray will be sent from this point and the kinds of those reflections rays may be the diffuse reflection rays or glossy reflections rays in this case let's imagine that this is the diffuse material so some of the rays will hit this surface again the transmission ray will be sent here another transmission ray here this one will go nowhere but some of those can go this way let's say that it's bent like this and then like this and let's say that it hits the light so this lamp will contribute to this point to the color of this point this way but let's imagine that we also have some lamp here 
Some of the diffuse rays will hit directly this lamp. The color of this point will be analyzed. This information will be sent back here and here. And this will determine the color of this point, this pixel. Okay, in most of the render engines nowadays, the analysis of the rays is bidirectional, which means that the rays are shot from the camera, but also from the lamps. It may at first seem counterintuitive, because at the beginning of this analysis, I told you that we don't shoot the rays from the light sources because most of them would be wasted anyway, but this is not exactly true and I will not go deeper into it because it's very technical and in fact I don't fully understand the concept behind it. Okay, but let's go back to our scene and our crazy material of this red ball and let's try to analyze why a certain pixel has the color that it has. Let's maybe analyze this point. In the scene, it would be this one, I think. So we shoot the ray straight from the camera to this point. The camera ray hits the diffuse surface. So it's sent the diffuse rays in all of the directions. None of those diffuse rays will hit directly the light source because as you can see, our lamp's direction is this. So this point is not directly exposed to the lamp. Some of the diffuse rays that are sent from this point will hit this surface, the floor. Some will hit this surface. So here another diffuse rays will be sent. Here some diffuse rays will be sent. One of the diffuse rays sent from this point will hit this surface. So the glossy ray will be sent to this direction to determine the influence of this surface on this point. Here we have the blurry reflections, so not only one glossy ray will be sent from this point, but several of them. And now some of the rays, the diffuse rays that are sent from this point, will hit this ball. And now what happens? The material of this ball is being analyzed. When we are analyzing the color of this pixel, this ball is hit by the diffuse ray. And the material of this ball is set such that here we have the mix shader node. To the lower input of this node, we have plugged the diffuse shader with a green color. And it is said that this material should be used when the surface is hit by the diffuse ray. When the ray that is currently analyzed is diffuse ray. In this case, we are analyzing this point and this is a diffuse ray. That's why this material will be used, not this one. In this case, this is not the material of this bow. This material is a little bit more complicated, but one of the parts of the node setup for this material looks exactly like this. Okay, so when we go back to our image, now we exactly know why this point has a greenish color. Okay, one of the parts of the node setup for this material looks like this. So we have a mix shader, something goes into the upper socket of this mix shader and to the lower one we have plugged the diffuse material with a blue color and as the factor we used is transmission ray. So when we are analyzing for example this point, here's what happens. The camera ray is being shot from the camera. It hits this surface, it sees that it's a glass material, so it will emit the transmission ray. It will bend, it will bend again, and it will eventually hit this surface. And we have to analyze the color of this and how this color influences this point. And at the moment, the ray that we are analyzing is transmission ray. So if currently analyzed ray is transmission ray, we are using this shader. That's why this point has a blue color. Okay, now let's take a look at two kinds of rays that we didn't analyze yet. Singular ray and reflection ray. We can take a look at the Blender's wiki. And here we have the section light paths. If we don't know how the ray tracing works, it's impossible to understand what is going on here. But now we know it, so it's a little bit easier to understand this we see that in general we have four types of the rays. The camera ray, so it's a primary ray, the ray that is sent from the camera to see which point of which object should be displayed in the particular pixel. Then we have the reflection ray, 
And here it is very important to properly understand the word reflection. In everyday language, we can understand this word as the mirror reflections. So maybe the glossy reflections, but this is a little bit wider term because diffuse is also the reflection. We may use the term diffuse reflections. So here, when we are using this output is reflection ray, we will influence the glossy, but also the diffuse rays. Okay, the third main type of the rays are the transmission rays. So these are those ones, this one and this one. And the last one is the shadow ray. And the shadow ray is sent directly towards the light, simply to analyze if the light is blocked by something or not. Now, as you can see, the reflection rays can be the diffuse reflection rays or the glossy reflection rays, but those types may also refer to the transmission rays. So when we are analyzing the diffuse rays, translucency will also be taken into account. And in case of glossy rays, transmission will also be analyzed. And now we have another kind of the rays, which is called the singular ray. And this refers to perfectly sharp reflections or transmission. So we can use this output to, for example, differentiate the influence of the material on the sharp glossy surfaces and not sharp glossy surfaces. So if I want to determine the influence of this material only on such glossy materials, I have to use both glossy output and singular output because glossy alone will give me the influence on this kind of material, this kind of material and this kind of material. When I use singular output alone, this will give me the influence on this material because this is the singular kind of ray and this kind of the material. Diffuse, by the way, is not singular. So this output alone is not enough and this output alone is not enough. To determine the influence on this material only, such material only, I have to say that this is glossy, but at the same time is not singular. So I can simply use the converter math note and I can subtract singular from glossy. So I have to change the operation to subtract. And when I use this as the factor here, this shader will be used only when it's hit by the rays generated by this kind of the material. Well, it seems that subtract is not the best operation in this case. So instead, let's multiply the glossy by the inverse of singular. So I will change the operation here to multiply, but in this case, I have not the behavior that I want because I wanted this material to be blue, not in this area and this area, but in this area. So I have to use the inverse of singular and I can use just the color invert and plug it here. Or in this case, I should rather use the math node and simply subtract this value from one. So let's unhide this node, set the upper sockets value to one, change the operation to subtract. Now let's plug this one to the lower socket and connect this one here. Let's collapse it. And this gives me also the inverse of is singular ray. And this way, as you can see, I achieved exactly what I wanted. So as you can see, we can use the combination of the outputs of this light path node and this is exactly what I did when I was creating this crazy material. Let's analyze this and let's start with this part because here we have the first mix shader and here I am mixing this diffuse material with this diffuse material and here I am setting this part. So as the factor, I am multiplying the is glossy ray by the inverse of is singular ray. Then I take the output of this and mix it with such diffuse shader and this creates this part. So as the factor of this mix shader, I could use the combination of singular ray and glossy ray, but I would also have to take into account the inverse of transmission ray. But in this case, this combination worked. So I simply took the singular ray and multiplied it by the inverse of transmission ray. So, in fact, I did exactly what I told you. 
Now here I have plugged the output of this node to this mix shader and here I am setting the color of the shadows. So I have mixed this with a transparent shader and this is rather logical that as the factor I have simply used the is shadow rate output. And the result of it is plugged into this mix shader where I have set the influence on the diffuse rays. So I have plugged the green diffuse shader into the lower socket and as the factor I simply used the is diffuse ray. Here I have mixed the result of it with this diffuse shader and this is to set this color. So as the factor I have used simply the is transmission ray output. And that's it. Then at the end, just in order to be 100% sure that when we look at this object, we see this initial red diffuse shader, I have used another mix shader and I have used the output of all of those other settings as the upper input, as the lower one. I have plugged my initial diffuse shader and as the factor I used is camera ray output. Okay, there are several practical uses of this node, light path node. This example is rather extreme. I don't think any one of us would ever want to create this kind of the material. But one of the practical uses of this technique is to, for example, reduce the caustics noise. And this technique is very well explained by Sebastian Kunisch in this tutorial from Blender Cookie published on January 14th, 2013. There are also a lot of ways of playing with the shadows, of creating fake caustics. And now, I didn't cover the last output of this light path node, and this is the ray length. This output allows us not only to analyze which kind of the rays are currently computed, but what is the length of this particular ray. If we, for example, add the converter math node and multiply, let's say, the is diffuse ray by the ray length as the output, I will get the length of the diffuse ray if it's currently analyzed. So I can change the behavior of the material depending on distances. A very interesting technique of creating the absorption in cycles was shown by Gottfried Hoffman of BlenderDiplom.com where he uses the combination of transmission rays and the ray length. Okay, so taking advantage of all of the power that this little node has requires a little bit of practice, some trials and errors, and I hope that this tutorial gave you at least some starting point, so I will not go much deeper into it, have fun playing with this node, and that would be all from me. Thanks for your attention. Bartek Skorupa, see you next time.